Star Wars. It's great in the arcade. Whoa! The TIE Fighters, fireballs, coming right at me. Watch the laser towers. Aim for the tops. Pick in the cutout. Use the force. They're coming too fast. It's way, it's way. My shields are gone. All right, I'm going in. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and with only one day left until the new Star Wars movie, The Last Jedi, comes out, it is time to join Princess Leia's Rebel Force and invade slash raid the Death Star. Uh, yes, today we are visiting an arcade classic. This game is known in some circles as the fourth best arcade game of all time. It is a game simply called Star Wars. Yes, it comes from back in the day when you simply could call a game Star Wars because there were no other Star Wars games, really. Over on Kenobi's gone, but his presence felt within the fourth, the Empire's Death Star, blah, blah, blah. I didn't get a chance to read that. Hopefully you guys did, or hopefully you've seen a movie called Star Wars at some point in your life. This game is a vector graphics arcade machine produced by Atari back in 1983. We're going to get to play as Luke Skywalker. I mean, obviously. Who else would you want to play as in a Star Wars game? Come on. Um, and we are going to join his daring raid on the Death Star. This game only has three phases or three levels. And after we beat these three levels, it just basically resets. Um, but as you will see in a second, it also features the digitized voices of characters from the game. So, for instance, if I insert a quarter like so... The course will be with you. Always. Always. <laughs> All right. So here are the scores. So you do actually get to... Uh, a chance to shoot down Darth Vader's ship, which is pretty cool. Without further ado, let's go ahead and hop Good in five, here. Danny, now, we get a chance to choose what kind of de Death Star we want to start at. We can start at easy, medium, or challenging, or hard. I'm going to start with media, or easy, because I want to have a chance of getting places. And here we are! Glorious Vector Graphics from 1983. And yeah! I got one! Don't get cocky, kid. That's what Han Solo says to Luke. Um, so, the interesting thing about this game, by the way, is that back in the day for most arcade games... Man, I cannot hit these guys. There we go, we got one. Back in the day for most arcade games, you used to have to, like, beat all the bad guys before you'd go on to the next level. Red but this five, game's I'm a little bit in. different. Oh, there was Luke! Red 5, we're going in! Use the phone, Luke. <laughs> I love the digitized voices. It's so awesome for 1983. Man. This game, this game definitely would have looked advanced back then. This is like proto 3D graphics, guys. Uh, but in this game, all you have to do is survive, basically. So it doesn't matter if you destroy Luke, all the enemies or you shoot... <laughs> Luke, trust me. You shoot all these weird turrets that are sort of hanging around the side of the, the Death Star. All you have to do is live. As long as you live, Yahoo! the Death Star will die. You're all clear, kid. Yeah! Oh my god, I blew up the Death Star. That was shockingly easy. All right, so we win, Death Star destroyed. All right, so literally, how long have I been playing? Maybe two minutes, if I'm being generous, and I just beat the game. Guys, what do we think about Star Wars? Just kidding, we're not gonna wrap up that quickly. Um, now, uh, other interesting little bits of trivia for this game are that, oh God. <laughs> this game is getting harder. R2 is like trying to repair my, uh, my, my ship, man, they are they are not letting up. Uh, my strategy of just trying to survive to, to destroy the Death Star is not working out as well as it did the first time around. Good five, I'm going in. Now, because this is the second level, we're gonna get a different game mode here. As you can see, this is the, the, the third game mode that we did not get to see last time. On the easy mode, you basically go right into the Death Star Trench as soon as you're finished in space. But in the more difficult mode, as you see here, you first have to fight your way through these uh, glowing balls of doom on the surface of the Death Star before you get to the trench. Anyway, um, so this game was wildly successful in the arcades, um, and so successful, in fact, that uh, it spawned some sequels, believe it or not. Oh god, get off use the... the force, use the force. Hey, we made it to the trench, man. I don't, I don't think we're going to be blow up the Death Star twice. I only have one blowing up of the Death Star in me, but at least we got to see that. Anyway, this game spawned some sequels, as you can no doubt imagine. Interestingly, interestingly, ah, uh, we died. There was uh, Return of the Jedi was released after this game, and then after Return of the Jedi came out, they released a conversion kit for this game. 
So it wasn't uncommon back in the day for arcade owners to buy an arcade machine like this and then later on purchase a cheaper conversion kit that would turn this game into a different game. So without further ado, let's keep it interesting here and see what the, because we've seen this game. We've, I mean, literally it took me like two minutes to fly through this game. So we're going to do something a little bit different today, guys. Although this is nominally the game that we set out to play. We're very quickly going to check out two alternative takes on Star Wars the Arcade Game. And the first alternative take is going to be the conversion kit that upgraded this game to another game. So let's see what that other game happens to be. So here we are in the upgraded Star Wars The Arcade Machine. And as you'll see in just a moment, this is actually Star Wars colon The Empire Strikes Back. So they took the vector-based arcade game of Star Wars and they put a new spin on it. In this game, we're going to be flying through Hoth. We're going to be flying through asteroid fields. We're going to have a great time together. Look, The Empire Strikes Back. I believe they still have the digitized voices, if I'm not mistaken. He could destroy us. It's a dark time for the Rebels. The Empire has launched thousands of probot probots? Interesting. In search of the Rebel hideout, the Empire fears the strength of the Force within Luke Skywalker. So once again, we're going to take command of Luke. Be with you. And we're going to go ahead and uh, let's, let's start on easy once again. So these arcade games are short experiences that you couldn't really get at home okay we totally do have the digitized voice and here you go it's it's essentially the same game just with you know different different enemies so instead of shooting tie fighters we're shooting probots which i think is a made-up word i'm just going to come out and say it but uh, hey it's star wars you can't you can't knock on it that hard i'm sure skywalker is with them between ourselves i think boss luke is in considerable danger they're having like a whole conversation i hear like 3po and stuff like that oh god there's the walkers and we got the, the Empire's Use Death March sound. Okay, Harpoon. Did I Harpoon him? I think I did. I don't know what any of the buttons are, but I'm just going to press them all and uh, hope that it works out. I, I'm pretty sure I Harpooned... Can I can I Harpoon Shield this guy? Must be you be Game over. Alright, well, something bad happened there. I'm not 100% sure. The that leads to the dark I'm getting a lot of advice from Obi-Wan Kenobi about, hey guys... Let's give this one one more shot. Actually, I feel like I did a I feel like I did a bad job there. Okay, so we're gonna go. Oh wait, we have instructions. Oh my God, we have instructions in an arcade game. This is rare. Darth Vader's executor is searching for the Rebel hideout. Probot weaponry. Enemies may shoot at player. Probot transmitter. Transmission ready to launch when Probot head is white. There's a meteorite hit the ground near you. What? That was the instructions. That explained absolutely nothing. All right, let's just let's just try and kill things again. Um, I guess maybe I didn't kill all the walkers. So this time around, I'm gonna try and kill all the walkers. Make sure that none get away. Ooh, I got EDI. If I get the J, I'm a Jedi. Now this game was not as successful as the game that we just played, uh, the Star Wars uh, arcade game, because basically this this was an upgrade system. For what is happening? Are we back in the instructions? I don't even understand. Enemies may shoot a player when gun port is flashing. We have Imperial walkers. Okay. Well, whatever. We're just gonna we're we're just going with the man. I don't know what we're supposed to be doing here, but we're just gonna kill as much as we can. Boom! We harpooned him. Sweet. We harpooned one of the bad guys. Let's try and harpoon another. Oh no 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 no! Oh, maybe that's what happened. Maybe we just died from getting shot. Oh man, those things go down so easy. Okay, all we need to do is harpoon one more guy. We got this. Now, because this was sold as an upgrade to the Star Wars arcade system, as I've been trying to say, uh, basically the arcade system, the, the Star Wars arcade game sold very well, and arcade owners did not necessarily want to upgrade to this. So as a result, this game did not sell all that well. Hey, we made it to the Rebel, Rebel Hideout. That's pretty good. Now we get to kill Tie Fighters. Which is a shame. It's a shame that this game didn't sell better, actually, because, like, you know, compared to the first game, like, this is, like, a fair upgrade, I would say. Like, it's, you know, we get, we get, not only do we get a space battle, we also got a battle on Hoth. And, like, these battles aren't that hard. I'm, I'm actually kind of me impressed, because typically, at least I find that arcade systems, ten, or arcade games, tend to be pretty challenging, pretty difficult. They sort of just want your quarters, and they want it to make it a really hard, fast experience. 
I feel like on one quarter, you could get a significant amount of gameplay um, in in this arcade game. So if if this existed when I was a kid, I asteroids have no weapons. Asteroid avoid collision. <laughs> so simply just don't get hit by the asteroids. All right, we can do this. There's no point in shooting. So this is when uh, Han Solo. <laughs> Chewie! They, di they even digitized Chewie! That's awesome. So that was the scene where Han Solo was evading the Empire. Oh my god. Man, this is just getting me hyped for the next... So, the next Star Wars movie is literally coming out in the theaters tomorrow. Are you guys excited for it? Are you hyped? Um, I will say that I like the new Star Wars movies. I don't consider them as good as the original. And it, I, I don't think I'm one of those people who's like, oh, you know, nothing will ever compare to the original. I'm just going to throw one more quarter while I us. continue talking here. Yeah, of be with you. Um, I don't think I'm the kind of person who thinks nothing could compare to the original, but I just feel like the new ones have sort of been... They've been very solid, I will say. But there are criticisms that, for instance, uh, The Force Awakens was just a new hope, but reskinned, you know? It was like the exact same story. And, like, honestly, I agree with that. I think it's kind of true. Like, I, I liked Force Awakens, but it did also feel a little derivative of the original. So it would have been... There, there are some videos online about, like, what they should have done. And I've watched some of those, and I find that they're actually sort of on the mark, where it's like, yeah... Oh my god, look at all these bullets. How are we supposed to evade all this? I'm just totally dead here. Harpoon them! Harpoon them all! I'm like just flying into them. Harpooning as we go. Okay. So yeah, are you excited for the new Star Wars movie? I mean, despite the fact that I don't think they're as good as the original, and it might be a little derivative of the original, they definitely capture the feel of Star Wars that was missing in the prequels. And I, I really enjoy the new Star Wars movies, even like Rogue One and stuff like that. Like, I, they're... They're just, they're just solid movies, so they're definitely worth a watch, and I'm looking forward to seeing The Last Jedi. So I myself am looking forward to seeing Luke Skywalker back in action again. We're getting a little preview of what Luke was capable of. But we've died again! And in the spirit of checking out all these Star Wars arcade games, there's one more game that we're going to check out called Star Wars The Arcade Game. So just to be clear, the very first game I played, which I will come back to and play one more time before this video is done, is the, the game that's in the book of 1001 video games you must play before you die. This game that we just played is an upgrade to that game that you might have seen in arcades. It was the Empire Strikes Back version, which oddly enough came out after they already released a Return of the Jedi video uh, arcade game. So it went Star Wars, then it went Return of the Jedi, and then it went Empire Strikes Back in terms of arcade machines. So go figure. But there was one more game that was released in the 90s called Star Wars the Arcade Game. And it actually confused me. When I went to look up what game I was supposed to be playing out of the book today, I, I googled Star Wars the Arcade Game, and I found a game that looked nothing like what was in the book. So I had to do a bit of research and find out, oh my god, there's a Star Wars game that was released in the arcade, and then there's a game called Star Wars Arcade Game, which was released in the arcade in the 90s, but also released as a launch title for the 32X, so go figure. So let's just go quickly and see what that one's all about. Once more into the breach, guys. So this game was developed by Sega, and it was only meant for use in Japan. So we're kind of making the rounds with the uh, Star Wars arcade games here today. Um, again, it was the first game that I played today that is officially in the book. Without further ado, oh, look at this. Significantly upgrade. Oh, the sound effects even sound right. Yeah. Let's go ahead and insert some quarters. And we got some nice Japanese uh, titles. I have no idea. I'm just going to go ahead and press a button here. And then we'll go ahead and press a button. I, if you can read Japanese, I would love to know what I'm agreeing to here. Um, okay, so. Oh, I'm the pilot. I gotcha. Okay, I can do this. Oh. My. God. <laughs> that was awesome. A Japanese Admiral Akbar just gave me orders. Oh, there he is again. If this doesn't get you hyped for Star Wars, I can't help you guys. This is insane. We're in hyperspace. We're out of hyperspace. We are attacking. A run of star destroyers! Oh god, don't don't crash into them. Alright, let's kill these kill these Oh TIE Fighters, oh god, they're exploding all over me. Oh yeah, this is this is a Star Wars arcade game. You know what's interesting though? Like, okay, obviously the graphics are upgraded, but like it doesn't feel 
that different from like the 1983 game. Like there's more going on and stuff, but oh wait, <laughs> that, that Tie Fighter lured me into crashing into the the Star Destroyer. Um, yeah, it doesn't feel like it, like a huge change from the old the old 1983 game, and I guess that's that's actually a testament to like why the 1983 game is up there as like one of the best arcade games. You know, um, I think it's one of the best arcade games on a website. Uh, I forget the name of it, but it's basically called like the uh, the IMDb of arcades. Oh man, what is happening around me? Apparently, I also have a throttle where I can speed up and slow down, but I forgot to assign that control. So we're just going to pretend that this is cruising speed. Oh man, that Tie Fighter is going nuts! And I have 112 seconds to kill. How many? How many have I killed? Like four, two? How many was I supposed to kill? Twenty? Oh wait, there's another one. Let's kill him. Boom. Oh, he exploded big time. Let's make sure to get this guy. No survivors. Oh man, Tie Fighters are hard to get. I, I always find it funny in the movies how, like, the Star Destroyers were so ineffective against, like, X-Flings and stuff. Like, le like I'm not even worried about these big things, like, shooting at me. Like, look, their bullets are going all over the place. They are shooting bullets, but it's, like, nowhere near me. I, like, have nothing to fear. Oh, my God. Maybe I should have. Maybe I should have assigned the throttle here, because I feel like these guys are just, like, way out of my range. What is happening here? Okay, hold on. Let's fix this. Okay, look at this. Now we actually have a throttle that works. Let's do it. X-Wing ni Nimmo style. Star Wars music with a Japanese Admiral Akbar. Just it just makes so much sense for some weird reason. You tell him R2. I guess Admiral Akbar speaking Japanese just basically means that I mean it's like R2D2 is kinda like always spoke Japanese essentially. Because he's completely incomprehensible. So Admiral Akbar speaking Japanese is just sort of like, yeah, I don't know, Star Wars characters make no sense. Like, what what the hell was Jab the Hutt saying in any of his scenes? Without subtitles, like, nobody knew. Nobody knew. Okay, I, I'm trying to mess with the throttle here to, like, accelerate and decelerate. Can't tell if it's making a difference or not, but hey, there's a TIE Fighter. Get him. Oh, there's two of them. They're just hanging around. Get over here. Yes. I think we got one. So there's uh, definitely more freedom of movement than in the original uh, Star Wars arcade game. But yeah, it's it's more or less like the same game. It's just, you know, they've texturized it instead of it being vectors. I do like the old arcade vector graphics, though. Oh, come on. Get over here. Oh, he's dropping bombs in my face. Oh, no, we got R2. We got R2. I like how R2 screams like that. Wow. I wonder if R2 is definitely going to be in the new movie. So yeah, what is your... Okay, we've seen three Star Wars arcade games today. We've seen the classic original, which we need to go back to before I finish wrapping up this video. We have seen The Empire Strikes Back, which was the add-on. The sort of uh, add-on pack or whatever that allowed you to upgrade. The upgrade pack. Um, to switch over, you know, to upgrade your Star Wars arcade machine into a better system. And then we've seen this, which is Star Wars the arcade game. Which is not to be confused with Star Wars, which was the first arcade Star Wars game, or The Empire Strikes Back, the Star Wars arcade game. This is a game called literally Star Wars the Arcade Game. Such funny nomenclatures. I feel like you can't get away with that these days. Like, you have to give your, your games, like, a subtitle or something like that so that it's clear what version you're talking about. It's kind of like back in the day when, uh, when, like, a football game would come out on Atari. It would literally just be called Football. It's like no, it's not like John Madden football or like Atari's football or like football season or anything. It's just called literally just called football. Like you can't call a game that anymore. There's too many other competitors. I mean, think of how many Star Wars games exist out there. You can't just call a game Star Wars. Oh, I just launched a bomb or something. Look at that. There's like homing missiles. Hey, can I shoot? Can I shoot this thing? Oh, I can. I think. Oh, I can crash into it is what I can do. I only have two hits left. Man, I, I like I can shoot asteroids here, but I cannot find any enemies. Where the hell are they? The throttle! It does nothing! Get over Oh, God. Maybe I'm going way too fast. Man, the throttle does not seem to do anything. I guess this game was two players, so if you had a buddy, he could be a gunner and you could be a pilot, but... I don't know if that would make, like, a huge difference. I'm definitely just going to run out of time here. I'm straight timing out. 
all the all the red squadrons are gonna be checking in. They'll be like, yeah, I got 40, I got 50. They'll be like, I don't know how many I got. My mission's incomplete. My ship just looks like it's about to explode. It exploded in shame. Continue, yes or no? You guys know the answer to that. The answer is yes, but not with this game. We gotta return from whence this all started. So here we are, guys, back where it all began. Star Wars for the arcade. We're throwing in some quarters here, and we're gonna give it one last Good shot God, Danny, for bye. the road. Now that we've seen what Star Wars can be at its best, let's see what it was at its simplest. And again, you know, I, in fact, I have an easier time killing uh, TIE Fighters in this game than I did in the, in the like, new fancy one from Japan. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like the, the, game, the core gameplay here is not that different. It's pretty similar. Come on. I'm just taking hits now because I want to kill this TIE Fighter. He's really pissing me off, <laughs> you dick. Just die already! Yeah, we got them. Okay, well we got we got like two of them. We took like a billion hits to do that. Um, Star Wars is a classic, I, I think, like movie and games. Um, it's interesting too because like we've also played like Rogue Squadron, and I feel like even Rogue Squadron uh, hasn't hasn't like progressed, you know, like too far from this core gameplay. Like, the core gameplay that you've got here is basically what all Star Wars shooters are based on. In fact, I find this this kind of shooter almost a little bit easier than, like, Rogue Squadron, because it's a little more linear and, like, enemies are, like, in front of you. I don't have to be, like, circling around endlessly trying to find enemies. For any of you who've watched my channel before, you know that in, in flying games, especially space flying games, I have trouble finding the enemies, and I, they, like, get behind me, and then, like, I can't find out where they are. We just crashed in the Remember, trenches, by the way. The force will be with you, always. Thanks, Obi-Wan. So I, I, I think, personally, I kind of prefer this simpler take on Star Good Wars, bad, where you don't really have to worry about what direction you're going. You're always flying in the right direction. You just gotta shoot the stuff that's on your screen. So I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm not very good at flying games, but uh, that's just how I feel. Anyway, let's give this game a proper evaluation. So, Star Wars the Arcade Game. What do we think of this game, guys? Is it one of the games in the book, 1001 Video Games You Must Play Before You Die? And I... I don't know. I, I would say that I think this game actually would have a fair amount of appeal in the sense of... It, it is oddly still satisfying to play. It doesn't feel like incredibly dated or anything like that. Like, you know, definitely like Star Fox was not necessarily much more complicated than this. Sure, sure Star Fox had like more levels and stuff. But in terms of like, if you've never tried this game, if you tried it out, would you have fun like shooting some stuff for a little bit? I could see that uh, the answer might be yes there. The thing that, that, is, that, that is difficult about this game is that after you've played it for a little bit, uh, you you know you blow up the Death Star once and the levels start Yahoo! to get like exponentially no, harder. Oh god, I think I missed the exhaust port. <laughs> Gotta go in for another round. And um, the levels start to get exponentially more difficult, and I think that is where like old arcade games don't hold up as much anymore. Because I feel like players these days don't want games to get harder and harder and harder uh, exponentially. What they want is like games to like no, gradually get a bit harder, and for games to include a lot of variety. And I feel like that is that is something that's missing in this game. You're not going to have a ton of variety no! in the levels. So it's it's a game that's worthwhile to like say that you tried, but I don't think there's going to be tons of replay value here. But in terms of like it, the gameplay it does offer, it's not that far off from what you'd find in modern shooters. And hey, if you're the kind of person who likes to get really good at a game, you might uh, have a fun time playing this, trying to get a high score. I think the high score for this game is like a billion points or something. It took like 40 hours to get something insane. All these old arcade games have like insane points. It's like if you want a high score, you gotta play for like four days straight. Like l learn not to sleep and stuff like that. Um, as a Star Wars game, I've definitely played worse though. <laughs> And what do you guys think about the upcoming Star Wars movie? I know I've asked it like a billion times during this video, but are you guys looking forward to it? Because I know I am. Um, so let me know in the comments down below if you agree with my assessment of this game and or uh, if, you, if you've seen The Last Jedi by the time this video comes up. Maybe you've got some opinions and thoughts. This would be a great area to share them because then I can have a conversation with you about it. 
Um, either way, guys, whether you love Star Wars or whether you absolutely hate it, whether you love this game and you totally agree with my assessment or you absolutely disagree with all your heart and soul, I hope you've enjoyed checking it out with me today um, and the other two games we got to check out, which were pretty fun. If you have, go ahead, like the video, subscribe to the channel, because I am normally back in a few days with a new video in this ongoing series, play through the book, Thousand One Video Games Must Play Before You Die, but that series is going to be on hold for the remainder of the year, basically. I'll be returning in January with new episodes. However, that doesn't mean there won't be new content. There will be new videos coming out over the Christmas break. So go ahead and subscribe if you like what you see, or just remember to tune back in if you're already a subscriber, because um, we will have some fun games to play over the break together, guys. So until next time, my friends, don't get lost in a galaxy far, far away. Go see The Last Jedi, and take care of yourselves. All right, guys, until next time, peace. Remember, the Force will be with you always.